The Office of the Director of National Intelligence Manager for Aviation revealed their new seal, which was brought to my attention yesterday. And amazingly, it unambiguously shows a flying saucer in it. It's an official government seal. It's important to keep in mind the NIM aviation component of the ODNI and UAP task force prepared the UAP report that was published on June 25th of last year. Here is the Director of National Intelligence website describing what NIM Aviation does. NIM Aviation leads intelligence community efforts to identify, analyze, and integrate intelligence on threats and vulnerabilities in the air domain. NIM Aviation coordinates with air domain community stakeholders, defense, federal, state, local, tribal, territorial, international, private sector, and academia to support and advocate for intelligence priorities and opportunities to strengthen the safety and security of the air domain. What would lead the NIM Aviation, that is the National Intelligence Manager for Aviation, to include a flying saucer in their logo? Well, an interview that UFO Joe conducted with Luis Elizondo back in March 5th, 2022, may give some insight into what led NIM Aviation to put an unambiguous flying saucer in their brand new logo. By the way, let me just tell you before we get into some questions here. Um, two days ago was a historic day. And Joe, you're the first person that's going to know this publicly. It's happening right now in your podcast. Um, I am very pleased to announce that there was a significant significant, and I can't overstate significant milestone achieved about a day and a half ago. Um, without going into a lot of detail, it may come out public, it may not. Uh, but I think um, the NIM Aviation, the National Intelligence Manager for Aviation under the Director of National Intelligence, uh, a two-star general, needs to be significantly applauded. Um, there was some significant effort in that I think is it's certainly in the interest of the United States and the American people um, that just occurred. And so I want to do a real quick shout out and, and a huge sincere thank you to the wonderful folks at the DNI and the and the uh, NIM Aviation, um, the general uh, for for outstanding work. Thank you for 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 doing what you did and and keeping the American people. Um, you know, the focus of, of, of your job. Um, this never in the history of, of, of the topic of UAPs um, have we got to this milestone and, and that was just achieved. And by the way, I think it's a step, step in the right direction for transparency. Um, I, think, I think the result of what just happened will result in a trickling down of information to the public where it belongs. So when people say, oh, I want to see another video or I want to see um, a significant step was taken a couple of days ago uh, towards that direction. So I, again, just want to say, um, congratulations to the to the folks, men and women at the DNI and, and everybody else who's been working so hard and tirelessly on this and has been taking this topic seriously. And uh, a big congratulations to our to our, our NIM Aviation, um, the general. So thank you very much for 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 doing what you did. Do these statements by Luis Elizondo have any connection with the new logo? With the flying saucer unambiguously placed in it? Well, no one really knows. It's just a possibility. The fact of the matter is, on UFO Twitter, there are all kinds of takes. And ultimately, everyone is just basically spitballing. Because until someone from that organization gives us some clarity, we won't really know for sure. But no matter how you slice it, I think it's a pretty interesting story that a flying saucer was put in the seal of such an important and large organization within the U.S. government that contributed to the UFO report in 2021. Today is a good day to dive into some of the takes on UFO Twitter regarding the new seal. What do you say? UFO Titan writes, in your opinion, would it be a reference to actual physical objects they know to exist or have seen? Or are they simply acknowledging the spirit of the discourse surrounding unknowns? The UFO zeitgeist in popular culture, so to speak. Tim responds, I think people are trying to read way too much into it. USAF's 10 cap uses an alien head in their logo. The, 100, the 595th space group has a flying orb in space in theirs. The NRO frequently uses dragons. 
They're just ironic symbolisms. Hollywood responds. Still begs the question why, though. Irony aside, nothing is placed anywhere without some thought. Every symbol has a reason regardless. I don't know if the citation, just as an example, that, the, that since the NRO uses dragon in their symbolism, thus the flying saucer in the NIM aviation logo can confidently be assessed to be mere symbolism. And the reason I don't think that's necessarily the most prudent perspective is because the NRO doesn't have a precedent for looking for dragons. NIM Aviation is responsible for looking for unknowns and UAP as far as I understand. So to me, for NIM Aviation to have a flying saucer in their logo is more intriguing than the NRO, for example, having a dragon in theirs. Now, people were bringing up to Tim McMillan what Lou Elizondo said in March of 2022, of which I've already showed you in, in an actual clip. But here is Paul Scott Anderson saying, this is what Lou said. Tim responds, gotcha. Lou is talking about General Dan Simpson and referring to the early actions that would lead AOIMSG to become AARO, which meant NIMS had to now be part of the loop for national intelligence estimates on UAP. Tim continues, I'm legitimately not trying to be rude to anyone. I thought NIMS being part of the new UAP effort was already well-established public knowledge. I thought all this fuss was over the logo. Nick Pope gives his take. The national intelligence manager for aviation logo features a UFO, but this isn't something hidden that's been uncovered. It's something they wanted to be noticed. Elements within the U.S. government are actively promoting the UFO narrative, but why? Brandon Fugel chimes in, because it is real. Witness testimony of saucer-shaped UAP go back decades and have been reported over and over again ad nauseum all over the world. This isn't an American-centric phenomenon. In the beginning of the movie The Phenomenon by director James Fox, it covered an incident that took place back in 1955 on a clear, sunny day with decorated World War II pilot William Cohen. His plane took off from Miami on a routine flight <clears throat> to deliver a B-25 bomber to an air base in Mississippi. He was with two passengers, which were both aviation engineers. During the flight, at first he noticed a perfectly round shadow on the ground. Later, he sees the actual saucer, metallic saucer, traveling across a field lower than his plane, and his plane was at very low altitude when this happened. Coleman notes that the disc had no exhaust propulsion, no rivet line, and no round edge. The following clip is Senator Martin Heinrich of New Mexico, who's on the Intel Committee, and has been given, as far as I understand, classified briefings on UAP discussing the nature of UAP. And this clip is from May of 2021. Bigger thing to worry about if it's a foreign government or if it's aliens. Oh, option B, much bigger thing to you worry about. You think the aliens would be worse? Uh, I, I, I cannot imagine if we have... Uh, if there is a foreign government that had these kinds of capabilities, I think we would see uh, other indications of advanced technology. Um, I, I can't imagine that that what has been described or, or shown in some of the videos is of uh, belongs to any government that I'm aware of. On November 10th, 2021, a discussion forum was held with various speakers called Our Future in Space Ignatius Forum. And the sitting director of national intelligence had this to say regarding UAP. But of course, there's always the question of, is there something else that we simply do not understand that might come extraterrestri extraterrestrially? That is only a microscopic sampling of what has occurred and unfolded over the past five years. And the UAP discussion within the United States government has only escalated further exponentially. I mean, if you've seen the recent legislation that's been drawn up by the United States Congress, you'd have no choice but to concede that point. 
whistleblower language so that people from legacy UAP programs can come forward and, and talk behind closed doors in classified settings to members of Congress without fear of reprisal, um, looking into only, or, or let me put it this way, requesting information and data only on objects that are not assessed to be of man-made origin, and on and on it goes. What's my point? My point is that as this has escalated, and it objectively has, if there's really no there there, and it's all truly just low information zone data that's being blown out of proportion, hysteria, if you will, if you're the United States government, five years later, why would you put a flying saucer on a seal for an organization that's part of investigating UAP. Just as I was editing this video and getting it done, social commentator Eric Weinstein conveyed something very interesting about this logo, and I wanna share it before we depart. This is an official dot military domain of the Department of Defense of the United States of America federal government, now with a flying saucer. Explain to me any conceivable way there's still no story here at all in fall of 2022. I don't get your perspective. From pure official propaganda to hypersonic adversarial drones to aliens, there is some huge story here, huge. We just don't know which one yet. I'll leave it at that. I don't have all the answers. But there's some very good questions to be asked. That's for darn sure. Please do not forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You could become a patron. You could become a YouTube member. You could even give me a one-time donation. All of those possibilities are in the description box below. Or you could just slap a like on this bad boy and I will appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me a one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.